The last major topic in this CSS series is CSS floats. And CSS floats is the alternative to CSS positioning for altering the document flow. And CSS floats has some positives and negatives, just like CSS positioning has some trade-offs. And we're going to look at floats in this couple of video tutorials here. Floats are probably the more difficult of the two for um, beginners to understand, but they're probably the preferred method of laying out things on the web. Now, in order to illustrate CSS floats, I'm going to build a little bit of a boilerplate here. I'm just starting from a blank slate, and I'm going to create a div tag, and we'll say id equals wrapper. So we'll create this wrapper tag here, and inside of this, we'll just create two divs. So this one's going to be id equals red. And the latter div here will be blue. So we have just a basic layout here. We have a wrapper or a parent tag with two children. And let's set up some basic CSS. So on this wrapper tag, we'll just say background dash color is black. And on these other two tags, we'll just give those each um, a separate dimension as well. So on this red one, we'll make it red. On the blue one, we'll make it blue. And we're going to give each of these tags a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. And then once we have this little boilerplate code set up here, we'll save and jump back to our browser and refresh. And you can see this is how it's looking. So I have my red div, my blue div, and that wrapper tag is around them both. Now, in, when you use CSS floats, it's oftentimes you're trying to build a, a column-based layout where there's two columns or three columns or things that are side by side. And there's quite a few use cases for CSS floats. Now, when using CSS floats, there are a few options. So the first option is you have to declare a float. So I'm going to come up here to the red div and I'm going to say float and your options are either left or right. So whenever you float, you're either going to float left or right. That's the only two options. There's no such thing as float center. It's either the left or the right. And when you do a CSS float, it automatically removes the element from document flow. So just like when you use absolute positioning by floating an element, it removes itself from the document flow. So I'm going to take this red div and float it to the right. So I'll save here and come back. And when I refresh, you can see that red div goes all the way to the right of whatever its parent container is, and it sticks itself on the right hand side. And that's the basics of how this float works. So now I'm going to actually take this. Uh, well, before, let me back up a little bit. Now, because this red div is floated right, it's removed from the document flow. So as far as the HTML is concerned, let's go back here and look at our HTML. <clears throat> we can think of this as being completely gone. So the wrapper div thinks that it only has a blue div inside of it. So keep that in mind when we do this next little piece. So now I'm going to take this blue div and I'm going to float it to the left. So I'll say float left. And let's save here and we'll come back and refresh. So the blue div is now floated left. The red div is now floated right. And notice that my wrapper completely disappeared. And the reason is because when you float, it's removed from the document flow. So you can think that both of these divs are gone. So now my wrapper div, which is that black div, thinks that there's nothing inside of it. So it's invisible because there's no height or width now to that div because both of the children were floated. They got removed from the document flow. So it thinks that it's empty. Thus, it's, there's nothing displayed here. So when you remove or when you float, elements get removed from the document flow. So the question is, well, they are in fact there. So how do I get that red or the wrapper div, that black div, to go back around both of these divs? And that idea is what we call clear fix. Whenever you float, um, you have to do a clear fix to the element so that the wrapper tag will wrap around the elements. Now, a clear fix is a little bit complicated, especially for this intro series. And what I recommend you do is just go Google 
for the what's called the clear fix. And if we Google for clear fix, there's several links here that talk about clear fixes. And we'll just go to the CSS tricks. Nicholas Gallagher here has quite a few um, different clear fixes that he's written over the years. Um, but let's just quickly apply one so you can see what it does. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to copy all of this code right here from Chris Coyer's website. And we'll jump back here and apply this fix. So I'm going to come to my CSS and paste all of that code inside of there. You don't have to really worry about any of this stuff. Most of this stuff is just little CSS hacks and whatnot to make this work in all the different browsers and Internet Explorer and Chrome and Safari and all the different variants of the browsers. All we really need to do is get this code in here. Notice that all this code is set up on a class called dot clearfix. So once you have floated an element, if you want the parent element to contain the children or to reappear, all you have to do is just apply that class. So I say class equals clearfix. So I'm setting this class, which is going to apply all of the CSS we pasted inside of here. And notice once I save, I'll save my HTML and save my CSS. Come back here and let's refresh this. I can close this down now and refresh. And now my wrapper div reappears where it should be. So essentially what a clear fix does is it restores the normal document flow to a parent tag whose children have been floated. So that's one way to make a parent contain the children. There's another way if I didn't if I didn't apply this clear fix, so I'm going to delete all this code and let's assume that I didn't use that method. So I'll save here again and come back and refresh and notice they're gone. If you float the children and you want the parent element to contain the children, you can also float the parent. So I can come up here to the wrapper tag and I can say float left here. And that will in fact, whoops, I did that to the wrong one there. So he didn't do it to the wrong one. It's just the problem is I can't see it. So I need to actually give this thing some margin. So I'll say margin 10 pixels and save and refresh and not margin, padding. So let's save and refresh. And you can actually see that that black box is in fact containing the children. If I was to take that float out and refresh, you can see now it no longer contains the children, it just has that 15 pixels of padding. Now the reason why all compacts down is whenever you float, so whenever I say float left, whenever I float left or right, it automatically shrinks the tag to only its needed space. So in other words, this tag compacts down and it, now the width of the wrapper is only the width of its needed space, which happens to be the left and the right element. So that's how you can kind of think of floats. Whenever you float an element, it shrinks down to only the space it absolutely needs. So by floating the parent, I can clear the float or by floating or by applying that clear fix hack. Some people call it the CSS clear fix hack. I can also clear a float. So those are a couple of ways. In the next tutorial, we'll look at a few of the other nuances of clearing or floating and clearing floats.